Go praise it to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Ochakodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. It means he is. Yahweh Shai is the name of his son. It means he is his saint. Ochakodash is the name of the Holy Spirit in Hebrew. Today is what they, what, you know, the Hebrew festival of Halloween. Um, I just want to give a quick breakdown as to what the Lord thinks about Halloween and Easter and all these other things that everybody is um, accustomed to celebrating, you know. This is Amos 5 verse 21 I hate I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your summon assemblies that you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings. So you have to understand that, you know, a lot of the time when you're talking about things like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, people will often roast turkey and stuff, and that goes back to traditional meat, you know, uh, meat offerings. We're going to go into that in a second, actually. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard your peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows, and I will not hear your singing, don't want to hear your Christmas hymns, don't want to hear your Halloween games, whatever. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But you have borne the tabernacle of Moloch and chewing your images, the star of your God, which ye have made unto yourself. Therefore, I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Let's get into that a little bit. Let's, let's, let's break it down. Let's first of all have a look at this in my sword. One sec. So when we look at the word ch chewing, it says an image or pillar, probably a statue of the Syrian Babylonian god of the planet Saturn. We all know about Saturn. We go into that later. And used to symbolize Israelite apostasy. So, I'll look that up. So, if we look up the word apostasy, is the abandonment or renunciation of religious or political belief or principle. So, that is just to say that if you're Israelite and you go apostasy, if you have apostasy, means the abandonment, you, you know, if you follow in chewing and, and Moloch and all them mad gods, it shows that you kind of given up on following the way of your fathers. So going back to Amos. 5 and 21 it says I hate I despise I hate it's an interesting word to be hateful uh, to be hated because you despise to reject to be rejected your feast days feast days festivals all your festivals or your gatherings and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies that is to to perceive or accept, you know, to accept the offerings. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Uh, and here it says that all your holy, holy days, or as you otherwise know it as holidays, so all this bullshit, all, all this bullshit, all this Christmas, all this Easter, all this um, Halloween, the Lord hates it. Straight up hates it. He doesn't want nothing to do with it. And uh, he's, verse 22 Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Let's see, hold on. Meat offerings. From the unused root portion that is to bestow a donation, mm -hmm. a tribute. Not interested. I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. And he 
kind of sacrifice, you know, going back to you know how we all bake. Yes, yeah, so let's have a look at that one. Quick one, quick one. Something from the history of the Yule Ham or the long standing tradition of roasting a holiday pig. Well, uh, let's see. If uh, this is just an article found on the internet. We've heard the word Yule used around Christmas most often associated with a Yule log of some sort. The term Yule has a long and somewhat complex history, of it can broadly be defined as a reference to the ancient Norse rituals that have been incorporated into Scandinavian Germanic Christmas traditions, originally part of the winter solstice activities that is worshipping the course of the sun uh, over the year. Many Yuletide customs can be connected to the Norse god Odin and as well as the Germanic myths surrounding Freya. We're going to go into that actually. Freya is the link that combines medieval holiday traditions with the present. The Germanic god is associated with the wild boar, eating a sacrificial wild boar for Yuletide, and then late at Christmas can be traced to both pagan and early Christmas times. It is it continued in medieval times, as in the boar's head cow. That as the boar's head cow dates back to the 1500s. So just understanding where all these traditions come from. Let's have a look at Freya. Someone told me to look at that. Okay, the tradition of eating ham is thought to evolve from gen- Germanic pagan rit- ritual sacrifice on a wild boar known as a son of Gothel, Golter to the Norse god Freya during harvest festivals. Let's have a look at this thing that <laughs> you see. <sighs> Sometimes anglicized as Frey is attested god in Norse mythology associated with, with sacral kings it virility peace and prosperity the sunshine fair weather and with good harvest freer sometimes referred to as ingve freer was especially associated with sweden and sea ancestor of the swedish royal house right let me just do a little bit more let's dig in a little bit deeper okay so going into the worship of freer uh, his name means Lord, he's the Lord of Prosperity, some b- bullshit. He's described as being very handsome, but when you go down into, this is kind of some webpage I found for people who think they're witches um, to follow their stuff. But what's really interesting is if you look at the plants, um, holly, ivy, nuts and cones, St. John's Wort, and you you know so all these things if you really into christmas you'll know that the holly and the ivy is kind of very um often used you know the gold red green and red is often it's a big kind of theme colored theme in christmas and you'll know that nuts and cones this is, oh, it's, it's a big thing in Christmas, so you really just worshiping Freya. Is, um, and some and some other stuff. If you know, for people that are really into it, but just seeing the symbology is really useful. Seeing that uh, the nuts and cones on Saint John's Wort and you. deeper into you see the yew tree is again associated with Christmas being the original oh what they would call the original Christmas tree you know uh, you see if you see ash tree Christmas uh, not really not much says about the ash tree at Christmas Mountain ash, nuts and cones. We know that Saint John's Wort. Let's have a quick look. Right, so I can't really find anything on Saint John's Wort, but I think you get the general idea. Most of these things are just pagan worship in disguise, um, going back very far. So just, I, I mean, I, look, I'm not saying to anybody, take my word for it, but just look into what you're celebrating. Know why you're celebrating. Know what you're doing. Everything that you do 
be circumspect with that I want to say shalom